Hey, Blender Bob here. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a bicycle disc break, break disc, whatever, you know, the disc when they break bicycles. All right. So this is an advanced tutorial. So I'm not going to show you all the tools like this is extrude and this is how it works. And this is loop tool. You should know these tools already. If you don't go watch Blender Guru's tutorial and come back later and uh, then you can do this tutorial because you will see I'm using custom Pi menus that I do using Pi menu editor. So, but it's the same tool. If I go loop, it's, it's the same thing as loop tool. And if I go uh, cut or knife, it's the same thing as a knife tool that you have in a regular blender so nothing special about this okay so let's go right now okay so drag your image into the viewport scale it place it where you need it and then make sure you lock it so you don't select it by mistake before we start any modeling let's try to figure out how we're going to make the polygon so i'm just going to draw them just to see so for every corner i'm only going to have two segments same thing here and i'm going to connect these two together these ones will go straight to the edge now, what about the other ones here? Well, I'm going to cut in the center here. I'm going to cut again in the center. And all I need to do is to connect these points here so that I get quads everywhere. I think this is a very good way of working. You just think about what you're going to do before you just start modeling and do a lot of stuff. Then you realize, eh, that was not the right way to do this. Okay, so we also know that this is a repetitive pattern. It's repeated six times. So we don't want to model the entire thing. We just want to model one sixth of it and we're going to repeat it. So let's think of this wisely. I said that everything will be cut in the center here. So if I cut them all here, I will get five divisions and all of these five divisions will be divided by three. So that's 15. And this will be repeated six times. So 15 times six equals 90. So let's create a circle with 90 divisions. Okay, so scale to match the reference. Uh, looks like my reference is not centered. So I will just move the reference here. We'll unlock it, select it and just move it like a normal object. Yeah, just like this. Then I will resize, uh, lock it again and uh, resize my circle a little bit. All right. Okay, we're good. Now I need a plane, just a simple plane in the background. Scale down a little bit. Okay, that's it for now. We'll come back on the plane later. Now I'm going to start working on the holes. So I will do a circle with the 12 divisions. We don't need more than that. So a circle, 12, and a rotation in X. I, I shouldn't work on the top view. I hate working on the top view. Usually I work on the side view, so I don't have to rotate all the time. Okay, so just scale it and move it in the right position. Now I will go in edit mode. Not that I want to modify the circle. It's because the next tool needs to be in edit mode. And if you don't have an object, you can't do anything. So edit mode, any one of them. And you see here, I got the make line. You don't have this probably in your blender. For that, you need to go into the preferences. And there's an add-on here that is called a mesh snap utility line. It comes with blender. It's free. So just turn it on and you will have this very cool tool. So from there, you can start drawing whatever you want. So I will just go here and do the corners, just rectangles like this. And you want to make sure that the color changes when you arrive at the first uh, dot that you did in the first vertex to make sure that it's closed. So when it's uh, orange, it means that the geometry is closed. I will use a different method for this one because it needs to be perfectly symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is just to create a plane. Again, rotation 9 degrees, scale down, move it up. I will insert an edge loop in the center. And now what I want to do is to take the vertices and scale them instead of moving them so that I keep the symmetry. So if I take these corners here, instead of moving, I go into scale mode. Well, I can just adjust it like this, but now I want to scale. Whoop, doesn't work. That's because here um, I need to change it to uh, in the to, 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 to bonding box. And now I can move them together. So this way I know I keep the symmetry. Okay, I will accelerate here because uh, it's going to take too long just to show you the entire thing because it's pretty simple geometry, just moving some points and inserting a few edge loops and adjusting to the shape that we are looking for. For this one here that is shaped like a bicycle seat, I'm going to work uh, horizontally instead because I don't want to work at a 60 degree angle. So I'm going to work like this. I'm going to turn back the grid on. You can see it's not very tight here. So I'm just going to unlock the reference and move my image a little bit to center it. Okay, let's go faster here too, because there's nothing very complicated here. Nothing we haven't seen before. I'm just going to move back my reference image the way it was before. All right, let's round the corners. So in vertex mode, you can select a vertex and do shift control B to go into the bevel vertex. And you can just scale it here. You play with the mouse wheel to adjust. We just want two division. That's it, not more than two. And you can do multiple ones at the same time. So everything that has the same radius, you can do them all. Just select them and do your bevel. 
Again, the same hotkey. And you continue like this until they are all done, obviously. I forgot to rotate this one here, so let me do the rotation from the 3D cursor. And when you press Ctrl, you can snap in 5 degree increments, so 60 degrees, right there. I'm going to make an exception for the corners for this one. I'm going to use three divisions instead of two because the, the circle is just too big. It's more than 90 degrees. So, so three divisions for this one here. Now for the other ones, I'm just going to use two divisions like we did before. That will work perfectly. I'm going to make my life easier here. I'm going to select all the cookie cutter shapes and I'm going to combine them together by pressing J. Let me just rename the plane here. I will call it wheel because it's kind of a wheel because uh, we want to keep everything clean. We don't want everything called circle and box and uh, polygon and... Uh, oh, I can also combine uh, the circle and the cookie cutters like this because uh, we need that too. All right, okay, now this is very important. What you want to do here is to select the plane in object mode, then you go into edit mode and you control click on the cookie cutters, so the circles here, and then you go into mesh and you do knife project and it's going to cut the entire geometry. Now I can invert the selection so I will just go select invert and delete. And now we only get the geometry that we need for the disc. Yeah, I should have called it disc instead of wheel. And I forgot to do the center part. That's going to be easy. So we have like three sided here times six. So that means 18. So we're going to start by creating a circle with 18 sides. Let me just scale it, put it in position. So we want it just like that. Then we're going to take the edges on the side here, all these, and we're just going to scale them up to get the basic shape that we're looking for. So scale, here we go. Now we can see the edges are a little bit too wide. So I'm just gonna change this here to make it to individual objects. So this way they will all scale at the same time from their center. That's good. Now maybe I can adjust these center points cause they're a little bit too far. So I'm just gonna scale them down a little bit but this one I wanna go back to bounding box and scale. That's perfect. And while they are selected, I will do my shift control B to do my bevel two divisions again. Then I can select all the other points and do the same thing. And this part will be done. And like we did before, select the wheel in object mode, then switch to edit mode to select the circle, go into mesh and use knife project. Now we can delete this part. Clean up time. When I say we, I'm talking about myself and my imaginary friend. Here's a picture of him. Well, you don't see him because he's imaginary. At the beginning of the clip, I told you we would only work on one sixth of the geometry and this is how we're going to cut it. We're going to cut right here and then we want to cut. No, that doesn't work. It's at the wrong place. We don't want this hole here. So we're going to cut right here in the center of the geometry right there. But before we cut the entire geometry, I want to start connecting points first. So you can just select two points here and press J to connect them together. So connect, 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 connect. You will find some edges that have been created by the projection and like these here. The white one is okay, but the two orange ones are not good. We'll delete them later. First, let's connect everything that needs to be connected together. These edges are not good, so I need to delete them and I'm going to use a limited dissolve to delete them. So this way I keep all the points that were at the end of these edges. Because if you do a delete edge, the entire polygon will disappear. And if you do a dissolve edge, then this point will also disappear. This is something I always struggled with in Blender. Now I have a lot of cleanup to do and this is the principle that I'm going to apply everywhere. This is the way to get squares everywhere and this is how bevel works actually. So there's an edge in the center here and it's going to cut here in the center. Same thing on the other side here. And then I will connect this point here to the center point here. Same thing on the other side. And then I just need to connect the bottom part and here we go all quads. So this is what I'm trying to achieve on the entire geometry that we have right now. For all the edges that I created, I will press W to subdivide them. I think it's W. I changed my settings so many times. I don't know. I, it's just subdivide the edge. Okay, uh, this one here needs to be connected with this one and this one here. So I will create this T here. And then I need to connect the corners, this one with this one, this one, press J and they are connected. And now I do the same thing for the rest of them. Okay, for the edge of my geometry here, I'm just going to cut some polygons here so I have something to snap to, something that would be similar to what we have on the other side. I will accelerate the clip, otherwise you'd be watching me cutting polygons for half an hour. Okay, so this is a long part, maybe I should put some music there, but you know, where should I find music that's royalty free? There's stuff that comes with YouTube, but they're kind of boring and it's hard to search because this search engine is really, really bad. 
Especially when you consider that it comes from Google. I mean, they should do a better way to search for music, but eh, anyways. So instead, I will just say stupid things like I'm doing right now that are completely relevant to this clip. But it's okay because it's pretty much done like now. Here, I'm not too sure where I'm going, but I'm just going to improvise. So obviously, this is going to be cut like this. This is like no need to, to search very hard for this. Then you do the obvious. Okay, so this one will go with this one here. Of course, I could use a mirror but you know it's no I cannot use a mirror because the top is not symmetrical two other easy ones here I can create an edge on the on the side it doesn't matter it's a straight line so I can cut it any way I want that's fine okay this one here is obvious so this one with this one same thing on the other side okay uh, I need to connect this central edge this is is this a good idea I'm not sure. Okay, so I will uh, delete this edge here, and uh, let's let's cut the middle edge. Let's see what it's gonna do if I do this. Okay, so that's not too bad. Uh, let's cut this one and this one here, so we get a full circle around the circle. <laughs> and if I cut this like this, I will have all quads everywhere. Time to get rid of all the polygons that we don't need. So here we're gonna cut in the center, right there, all the way. And delete all these parts same thing on the other side so all these polygons delete I would like to get more uniform polygons everywhere quads everywhere instead of these big long rectangles so three three another three here and this one only two would be sufficient and the last one I will put three because I wanted to connect on the other side so I added three on the other side I need three on this side too this part is very important here. You're going to duplicate the subject, but actually you want to make an instance. So you go alternate D instead of control D. So now I can move it around by 60 degrees, again by holding control to snap every 5 degrees. It's important to use an instance because if you modify one, it's going to modify the other one also. So this way you know that any modification you do is going to be applied on all parts. Make sure that snap to vertice is on and just stitch the two geometries together. So just snap one point on top of each other all the way around. It doesn't matter if it's centered or not. I'm going to fix it later using smooth vertices and it's going to be very fast and very simple. And after this, it's going to get very, very simple. And just like we did before, I'm going to select this part here and copy it around 60 degrees four more times. Select all the object and merge them together using J. I'm going to turn on an add-on called Mesh Check and I want to turn on Non-Manifold and end gone and this allows me to check the geometry to make sure it's okay. So you see everything that is in red means they are end gones, meaning that they have more than four sides. So I need to fix that. I should have checked it before I copied everything, but that's an easy fix. I just need to select the vertices and join them together by pressing J. Give me a second, I will fix them all. Sometimes you get into this situation where everything looks okay, it looks like I have two quads, but I have two points on top of each other, so I just need to merge them together. Snap, and here we go. It's fixed. You see the green lines here, this one here, and all around? Well, this comes from mesh check, and it means that some points are not welded together. So I just do a merge by distance, and it will fix everything. You see 80 vertices have been fixed. Okay, I can turn off the add-on now. And I will select all the vertices and I will go into the select and you go into select loops and you go into select boundary loop. I don't know why it's in loop because it's not even a loop. Anyway, I will inverse the selection and go into vertex and do a smooth vertex. So this way I will smooth everything that is not super clean. And that's why I told you before, don't worry when we stitch the two parts together, it was not uh, very, very clean. Well, that's why we do this to fix all this stuff. Okay, now we can select all these polygons and just extrude them. So simple extrude. I will turn on auto smooth and we're gonna add a bevel modifier. So modifier tab, uh, add a bevel. Okay, we need to adjust it. We wanna make sure we have a clean bevel. We don't want stuff like this, this is bad. And for this, we need to change the angle. But first of all, we're gonna change the segment two. We never want more than two. And the amount, let's make it smaller, 0 0.5, that's good. And we're going to change the angle to like 80 maybe. And you see that cleans up everything. Now it's clean all around. That looks good. Perfect. Now all we need to do is to add a subdivision modifier. So subdivision. And here we go. I will put this to 2 just to make it very clean. And we are done with our geometry. 
The best way to check the quality of hard surface modeling is to change the display to matte cap. You want to change this one here, matte cap, and use this red one here. Now you will see all the imperfections and everything in here. Looks like the bevels are too big because this is very high precision machine stuff and it shouldn't be that big. So I will just change the size of the bevel to 0 0.001. And now I got something that looks much more realistic. I got little bevels, just tiny, they're just small enough, but you can see them and it brings a lot of realism to the geometry. There's another one also we could try. So uh, let's click here on uh, to, 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 to this one here. Yeah, that looks very nice. Okay, so I just realized I forgot to do this notch here. So I will just go back a few steps, go back to just the flat surface, turn off the bevel modifier and the subdivision. And I will try to fix it. So using the knife tool, I will try to just cut some geometry and see if I can find a way to make it all quads. Okay, now let's delete all these polygons and uh, I will turn back on the modifier, the subdivision modifier to see if it works. So, all right, I just need to do some little adjustments here. So we'll take this vertex here and move it back up. Okay, and uh, maybe just something like this. Now, is it all quads? Let's take a look. Uh, it's not all quads. I can see already that I have two polygons that are not quads. This one here and the same thing on the other side. Okay, so how can we fix this? All right, let's try something. I will use the knife tool and cut again. So knife, I will cut from here to here to, I don't know, maybe all the way there. I don't know, I'm trying something here. So let's see here, if I do this, uh, yeah, I got I got quads, but I got two triangles in the center. So there must be a way to fix that. Okay, so what if I cut from here to the other side the way it was at the beginning? So I will cut from here to here. Uh, maybe some clean up here. I can delete these two edges. Now I get a bunch of triangles. Uh, I could just merge this here and merge this one there. I still have triangles. Maybe if I just delete these edges here, this one and this one, I will get uh, all quads. It's working. Cool. Okay, a little cleanup. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'll give it a shot. So I'll just select these points that I move and go again into smooth uh, vertices. Okay, so now I'll turn off the uh, subdivision modifier. I will select these polygons here because I need to fix everything around. I will separate them from the geometry and I will delete the polygons at the same position all the way around. And now you know the drill, we did this before, so I will select this part here and I will copy it five times and each time I will rotate it by 60 degrees. Select all the parts, join them together by pressing J and we're gonna turn on our modifier again to check to make sure that everything is okay. Oh, first of all, we need to merge all these points. So we just do a merge by distance and that should be okay. So let's check with the add-on if everything is fine. So mesh check. And I can see all the green lines. Everything looks good. Uh, there are no holes anywhere. You know, you can also use the solidify add-on if you want to give the thickness to the disc instead of doing an extrude. Uh, just make sure that you put it on top of all the modifiers. So bevel modifier back on and subdivision back on. Now I uh, deleted my uh, bevel by mistake, so I need to reset all the settings. So let's take a look at it uh, shaded. It's a little bit too round, so the bevel is too big. So it was at 0 0.001, I think. So let me put it back, 0 0.001. Something you may want to do also, if you look at your geom geometry and it looks a little bit too round, too soft, you may want to go into shading here and turn on hardened normals. And that is it. Here's another one that I did before. Uh, I remember making another one. Uh, but I cannot find it anymore. So it had six division in the center, eight around, and then six again. So I couldn't just make one sixth of the geometry and copy it around. It was much more complex, but eh, I don't know where it is. And since I know you're going to ask, here's the shader for the disc. I stole it from another guy's tutorial. Okay, let's switch the technique a little bit to do a car hub, wheel hub. So I'm gonna start with a single vert. That comes with the extra object add-on that comes with Blender, you just need to turn it on. I'm going to extrude it and if you press control it's going to snap on the grid so you can make it perfectly vertical. Okay so car hubs are usually divided by 5 so we have 360 degrees we divide it by 5 that gives us 72 degrees. So I've duplicated my line and I'm going to rotate this one by 72 degrees so this is the angle that we need to do our wheel hub. 
Now, while I get the two lines selected here, I'm going to write minus 36 degrees, which is, which is half of 72. And if you press Alt, Enter, then both lines will rotate at the same time. If you don't put Alt, only one line will turn. So you want to select both, minus 36, press Alt, and do your rotation. Enter. Okay, now let's create the arc of the circle that we will need. The, the exterior rim, the, the, the line, this, uh, well, this part here. Okay, let's do this one. I'm going to separate this into 18 parts. Why 18? Because 18 is a nice number because you can divide it by 2, by 3, by 6, and by 9. So you have a lot of latitude with that number. So we know we want 18 divisions and this is going to be repeated 5 times. So 18 times 5 is 90, just like the previous exercise. And that's a complete coincidence. Really, it is. Okay, so circle, 90 divisions and we're going to scale it up. And as you can see, the vertices are perfectly aligned with the lines that we created before. I will extrude these points and I will go straight into scale mode and then I can scale it down and I get this geometry here. Now I can delete everything I don't need because I just want to work on one fifth of the hub. Now I'm just improvising. I'm going to start by inserting some edge loops. Okay, let's delete some polygons here. These ones here and these ones here. Now you can see that in the center I got two, but on the edge I only have one. That's because when we're going to repeat everything, I'm going to get two everywhere. Okay, so I delete them. What else can I do with this? Uh, let's insert more edge loops here. Let's say five on all of them. All right, I'm gonna rotate the top points here. So I will select them all. Sometimes it's easier to just select more than you need and remove what you don't need. Now I want to rotate, but from the origin, from the 3D cursor, and I'm gonna use this proportional thing so that I get a nice smooth uh, curve and you can roll the mouse wheel so that you can adjust the influence. It doesn't matter if it's all twisted like this, because when I make copies and I rotate them around by 72 degrees, it's still gonna work. So here's 72. See, perfect match. Now some of you are dying to tell me in the comments that I can use the array modifier instead of copying them one by one. I got something even better for you. It's the array tool. You select your object, you go array, start array. Okay, I don't want any translations here. I'm gonna put all this stuff to zero. I don't want any scaling. What I want is an offset in 72 degrees here. So I'll just put 72 and the count on top. It's only at two, so I can change this to five. Well, actually, I want four. No, I want five. And now I get the entire thing done. It creates the array for me. It's absolutely awesome. You want to get this add-on. It's free. And I think it's free. And the link is in the description. And please don't tell me you can do this with GeoNode. Uh, and now. No, okay. So everything is an instance now. So if I modify one, you can see all of them get modified. Just like we did before, I'm gonna select this edge. I'm gonna extrude it and then scale it. It may not be the best way to do it, but it's nine o'clock. I'm tired. I wanna go to sleep and I wanna finish that clip. Can you tell? Okay, and I can move it a little bit down. Yeah, it's starting to look like a car, car hub. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side here. Yeah, okay, so uh, edge, select the entire thing here, then I will extrude, scale, okay, and I will move it down. I scaled it a little bit more just to make something different, and I will push it even more. All right, okay, let me add a bevel modifier with uh, two divisions like always, and let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, that corner there, that's not good. If you ever give me something like this, you will do push-ups. Let me add a subdivision surface modifier. See what it looks like. And no, that's really bad. This is awful. We want to fix that. The way to do it is to go in geometry here and change the inner for arc. And it looks like crap. That's not good at all. So what's going on here? Let me turn off the subdivision modifier. Yeah, that's not working at all. Even if I change the amount here, nothing is working. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, I know what it is. You see the scaling here, it's not happy with it. So I'm just gonna apply the transformation. And now, oh, now I get something better. Now, if I make the bevel a little bit bigger here, I still have problems in the corners. It's not looking good at all. So here, I'm gonna change it to arc for the outer. That's what I wanted. So it's, it wasn't the inner, actually, it was the outer. This is what I'm looking for here, but it creates an end gun here on each side. So how do we fix this? 
Well, the only way to fix it is to apply the bevel modifier. Yeah, you reach a point sometimes that you need to do this. You cannot always use a modifier. So yeah, we love you modifiers, but sometimes we need to say bye bye. And that's what I'm going to do here. So bevel apply. And now I can fix this. And that's simple. You just take this point, connect it to this one with this one, press J and that's it. And I have major issues here in the center. Let me turn off the add-on here so I can see what I'm doing. I also turned off this subdivision because you cannot model with the subdivision on. It's not working well. So I'm just going to cut here and here. Do the same thing here. So click, click, and click. And now I get all quads everywhere. I didn't show it to you before, uh, but I merged all the, the instances together. So now it's just one part. So I need to fix this. So I will have to redo it again. So I will delete. Whoops. I will delete all this uh, polygon row here, do the same thing on the other side, which would be this one here. So select the entire row and this one here. And now I'm well, I will go back to having just one uh, fifth of the geometry. And I'm an idiot. I forgot to fix this one here, this polygon here. So uh, I'll do it right now and let's see how I can cheat this to make sure it's going to work on both sides. So I'm going to use my uh, knife tool here and I'm going to cut from here and I'm going to press shift to cut exactly in the center. Okay. And I don't care if it's, if it doesn't look like the, uh, the, what we did before, we're going to fix it later. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. So now they're both perfectly aligned in the center. So now I can select these points here and I can scale them. So I want to scale from the uh, 3d cursor. I'm going to use the scale like this to place them where I want them. So I know this way they're going to be at the same distance on both sides. I'm going to do the same thing again. So knife tool, cut from here to the center by pressing shift and same thing on the other side. And again, I take my vertices and I scale them and it's going to be very tight on both sides. Cool. If you want to do your array again, you will see that it's grayed out. The way to fix this is to click on the done button and then it's going to reset it and you can do it again. Okay, so at this point, I'm just improvising. I'm just inserting edge loops and adding some bevels just to create some decorations. It doesn't look really good, but you know, it's, it's just an exercise. So we're, I'm just trying stuff. I'm improvising here. Okay, we need a place for the screws, but I don't have enough distance. I'm just going to take these polygons here and I'm going to scale them using the blue square here so that I scale only in two axes on the Y and on the X axis. All right, that should be good. Now, this is not a perfect circle. I'm going to make it a perfect circle using loop tool. So loop tool here at circle on my pie menu, but loop tool comes with Blender. It's free. Uh, you just need to turn it on. And I will do it again. Since it's something I use a lot, I put it in uh, my uh, pie menu. Okay, so let's add some loops here. So that should be good. Looks like a bunch of square. That's fine. All right, now I can select some faces that I'm going to use to create the hole for the screws. So yeah, something like this. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's good. And we're going to use loop tools again. So same thing. I go in the menu here and I will select circle. It's going to take all these polygons and make them into a circle. Now I can rotate them to align them with the rest of the geometry. I want to make sure that you do it from the uh, in individual origin. Okay. So rotate and I will align them just like this. Cool. All right. Now let's change the view to see what I'm doing. Uh, what I could do is uh, insert them. A little bit so just inside like this and uh, now I will move it down and I will extrude I can delete the face inside we don't need this anymore these points are a little bit too close to my liking so I will just select them and do a smooth vertices so vertex uh, smooth vertices here we go maybe a little bit more yeah that's good I will now bevel the edges here. Just a little bevel. We want two divisions, not more. Whoops, wrong hotkey here. Okay, so this, two divisions, and that's good. But this is not very good because you see here, I got this point here, that's not good. You want to avoid this. There should be another rim just to give it some space. So how can I fix this? Okay, I will select all these edges here and I'm just gonna scale them, whoop, not this one, 
and I'm going to scale them a little bit to give the edge that I want. And then I'm just going to insert an edge loop to recreate the bevel that I had before because now it's too big. So here I will insert a line just like that, edge loop. All right, that's good. That's what I was looking for. Let me just fix that again because we made it larger. So smooth vertices. All right, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. Okay, so we'll leave it like this. I'm still not happy with it. It's not super clean. Uh, I should have cleaned this part here, all these uh, polygons here that are kind of weird. So uh, let me just do a quick fix on this. I also want to fix the edge that I added before. This one here, it's too big. I, does, I don't like this part here. It's too close. I'm just going to scale it a little bit to so go into scale mode and scale with the blue square. Yeah, that's better. So one more time, you select all these parts here and you merge them together. You go into vertex mode, you merge all the vertices and you use merge by distance to make sure everything is tight. And it looks ugly and I would never buy this for my car, but hey, it's just an exercise, right? Yeah, good thing I'm not a car designer. And that's it for this clip. Bye.